Strap in for some alliteration. Every country and culture has its own culinary customs. What's normal to some is baffling and peculiar to others, but there are some meals and ingredients that are so specific to one location, the number of people who find them weird hugely outweighs those who don't. This video will either whet your appetite when it comes to gastronomic experimentation or put you off of food for life. These are the 20 weirdest foods eaten around the world. Number 20. Giant Isopod If you're unnerved by creepy crawlies, then a massive and oversized bug that hangs out at the bottom of the ocean may just be enough to give you the nightmares. But the giant isopod, for all of its more creepy vibes, is not really up to any nefarious ill doings. In fact, this weird sea creature is actually kind of helpful. They can measure up to around two and a half feet long, which is kind of alarming for such an insect looking thing. These things are not actually insects though, but they do look a lot like roly polies. Those are wood lice to all of you British people. Giant isopods are bottom feeders with a penchant for the grossest sunken sea things. Their unusual and frankly revolting eating habits are actually extremely useful in the more wide ecosystem of the undersea world. The giant isopod, with all of its insecty appearance, is a crustacean that lives in the deepest of the seas and eats all the carcasses of animals that sink to the bottom of the ocean. Now, the unusual animal can sometimes be called the vacuum cleaner of the deep, and even if it doesn't have a lovely smiling face like my own vacuum cleaner, it really won't be bothering you anytime soon. So I wouldn't lose any sleep over this one. But, and this is crazy, people apparently eat these things. In some parts of the world, the giant isopod is considered to be a delicacy. And you won't be surprised to learn that they have an especially unique texture and flavor. Oh, and they can also be kind of dangerous to eat as well. Often stuffed full of toxins and heavy metals, they can be mistaken for other sorts of crustaceans, which means that you could wind up eating the wrong thing. It's all a bit risky to be honest, and are you actually jonesing to try this food? I thought not, so we'll move swiftly on. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Shirako, Japan. Ew. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is the grossest thing that I've ever heard, and I work here at the Fancy Banana, so that is actually saying something. The Japanese delicacy, known as shirako, which means white children, is made from the sperm sacs of fish. Nice! It's believed to have certain health-giving properties, although what these may be actually remains to be somewhat mysterious. The type of fish used for this remarkably disgusting meal is either cod, pufferfish or anglerfish, and these have the best sacks apparently. Not only is it proper gross sounding, but it's also pretty weird looking as well. These blobs of white goo, and what else would they look like I ask you, can also sometimes resemble a kind of miniature brain. Also, you'd have to imagine not tremendously appetizing. But the weirdest part is how people say that the stuff tastes and I'm going to have to go by everyone else's reviews because this is definitely one that I'm never going to try. They say that it actually tastes like sweet custard. I mean, honestly, this is just too much, isn't it? These fish ball bags taste of love custard. Sorry, <laughs> just custard. And in that case, why wouldn't you just eat custard then? Number 18. Baloo, the Philippines. And here now is one that you have more than likely heard of before. This is baloo, or fertilized duck eggs. That means exactly what you think it does. These are eggs in which a baby bird has indeed been incubating for several weeks. Yay. <laughs> also known as Philippine Baya. But instead of hatching into a cute and fluffy little duckling, it's going to get cooked and eaten right from the shell. Life can be cruel sometimes. This is a popular dish from Southeast Asia, which may appear, to begin with anyways, like a hard-boiled egg, except that it's actually a hard-boiled duck fetus. And that is enough to unsettle most Western-stomached wimps. To be honest though, this one may be a bit much. I mean, you can actually see its face. That's really quite enough for me. I actually can't take any more of this. 
Thank you. That's the end. Number 17. Fried Tarantulas, Cambodia. Although munching on big hairy spiders may not be something that many people would immediately plan for a nice lunch date or a fancy dinner, sometimes staying alive means that people have eaten the weirdest of things. And that's apparently how Cambodian people discovered that tarantulas were actually edible, and in all honesty, they weren't even that bad. Under the repressive totalitarian regime of the Khmer Rouge, the starving Cambodian people would soon learn to eat whatever was available. Necessity is the mother of invention, and they found that fried spiders were not all that bad. Since the fall of the regime, the eating of these hairy arachnids has continued on. They're a deep-fried snack that is enjoyed throughout the entire country, and although this may not look all that appealing, they do say that it tastes a bit like crab, so it can't be all that bad. But what do you think? Could you eat one of these if you had no other choice? Would you eat it just to try it? Let's get stuck in a conversation about the pros and cons of creepy crawly cuisine in the comments section down below, shall we? Because I can't wait to hear what you all think about this one. Number 16. White Ant Egg Soup, Laos Have you ever found an ant's nest, you know, where there was a big heap of white eggs and crawling masses of the insects running all over? When you found it, what were your first thoughts? Maybe it was gross. Maybe it was lunch. I mean, seriously, who came up with this one? Because it's beyond bananas. Apparently, eating ants and their eggs and whatnot is actually a deliciously fabulous thing to do in Laos and Thailand. This is a soup that is made out of the eggs of the weaver ant and is a traditional part of the regular diet of substance farmers all across several parts of Asia. The soup is usually made from stuff like chicken stock, spring onions, chilies, fish sauce, lemongrass, shallots, and tamarind, probably to drown out the fact that you're eating ants' eggs. I mean, geez. In Thailand, they also rather enjoy grinding up scarab beetles as well, and chucking that into their own version of the red ant soup egg thing. Hmm, splendid delicious. I'm positively just drooling at the notion. Ant eggs are not only exclusively used in soups either. These weird little balls are used as a tasty garnish for other dishes, and apparently are enjoyed for their sour flavor and sense of countryside nostalgia. You know, like biscuits and gravy, I would suppose. Number 15. Jellied Moose Nose, Canada How often do you consider eating some nose? It's not the first choice for a cut of meat after all, and even though you know that all sorts of junk ends up in the sausage, it isn't necessarily the nose that causes a lot of consideration. However, in Canada it turns out, they're somewhat partial to a nibble of a moose nose. The eating of the entire moose dates back to a time in history when the indigenous hunters of Canada and Alaska would feed their families for weeks with the entire carcass of the creature. This also included the bits that other people may have tossed away. Every single bit of that moose was eaten or preserved, and that also included the schnoz. Cheek meat and neck meat just kind of disappears. Yep. Like braised beef, like grandma's. So how does one munch on a moose's snout? It seems that it could be just a little bit chewy, don't you think? Well, according to the recipes, the best way to eat this particular delicacy involves removing the fur. That can be done by singeing or peeling it off after it's been boiled, and then it's sliced and simmered with onions, garlic, and spices. After being cooked, the nose is then layered in a pan and covered with a gelatinous broth, after which it is left to solidify. The final dish is then sliced like bread and eaten, and the result is a food that is a particularly varied texture. It can be chewy in the bits with more cartilage and tender in the parts with more meat. But is it any good? Well, who knows? Number 14. Boshintang, Korea. Boshintang is a soup which has long been believed to have especially healthsome properties, containing spring onions, dandelions, and a bunch of different spices. Oh, and you know, dog meat. Yes, this is a traditional dish in Korean cuisine that is still eaten amongst the older generations and has long been believed to be especially healthy. And although it is pretty malodorous, people generally say that it tastes better than it smells. <laughs> Although, you still have to put dog meat in your mouth, so that also remains extremely subjective. Traditionally, eating dog has been part of Korean culture for centuries. In recent times, though, the popularity of the practice has been significantly reduced. 
In a recent poll, the vast majority of people who were asked about this traditional food culture responded that they had never eaten dog meat, and given the controversial idea of this in many Western countries and the spread of Western culture, it's hardly surprising. Dogs are rarely on the menu here anymore, and more than 60% of people are actually in favor of banning dog meat altogether. The government is currently looking at legislation to make it officially happen. Number 13. Quit La Choche, Mexico In many parts of the world, a corn cob that becomes covered in a blue-black kind of growth would be chucked into the bin and given up as being ruined. However, not in Mexico, where we have this hard-to-pronounce delicacy. This weird fungal growth is called corn smut, and it can appear on corn cobs, creating an extremely unappealing tumor-like growth. Sounds, um, delicious? But apparently in Mexico, this is also a culinary specialty. The Spanish name for this dish actually translates to sleeping excrement. Again, sounds super tasty, right? This corn smut junk is a fungus that is increasingly popular in Mexico and beyond. The spores of this fungus feed off of the corn before it's fully developed, and although that sounds like a disaster for the crops, people have actually discovered this creepy-looking growth can actually be eaten as well. And so, the loss of the corn cob is not such a big problem. This is now considered a delicacy that has an earthy flavor and a smoky taste with a soft texture that's not unlike mushrooms. It's frequently used in quesadillas, omelets, tamales, and inside of creamy sauces. And if you can stop thinking about how gross it looks when it's growing, it's actually not half as bad as it seems. Maybe even pretty tasty. Number 12. Arag, Mongolia. Mmm, delicious. Fermented horse milk. My favorite. Arag, or Arag, is a traditional beverage in Mongolia. It is slightly alcoholic, but also a very nutritious drink that is fermented. We need to ferment it. We need to make a really good area. And therefore, one of those super fashionable, gut-healthy things that are very much in vogue at the moment and have all those benefits for the digestive system and your overall health. It's slightly icky for most Western sensibilities, though, because it's made from mare's milk. But it's fermented because when eaten raw, horse's milk can have a laxative effect. And for that reason, Mongolians will only consume it in its fermented state unless for medicinal purposes. The milk goes through a process of fermentation that can last days and is quite involved. The resulting air rag turns out to be fizzy, slightly sour, but also a little bit sweet. And there are variations in the final taste depending on the region in which it has been produced. Number 11. Tuna Eyeballs, Japan Japanese cuisine certainly contains some weird and wonderful ingredients that are more or less unheard of on the plates of many Western diets. There are really so many different surprising items that are routinely eaten in Japan that it's difficult to choose which one to focus on. But there are a few that are truly unique to this country and get the taste buds of alternative places in a tailspin. Now, one such item is tuna eyeballs. Yes, the eyes of the tuna fish are regularly eaten in Japan and with great enjoyment as well. Also known as madama, tuna eyes are ingested with the belief that by doing so, you will become more intelligent. Perhaps there's an ounce of truth in this notion. Since the study of omega-3 fish oil has shown a connection between brain health and the eating of fish that is rich in the fatty acid as part of a healthy diet. And so it kind of makes sense, but if there is a particular concentration of brain-boosting properties in these big fish eyeballs, it seems really unlikely to be honest. If you do fancy giving it a whirl, the tuna eyeball is generally prepared by boiling it. Yep, there's an image for your brain. And then serving it seasoned with soy sauce, mirin, or sake. And ta-da, you've got yourself a stare meal. Number 10. Kazu Marzu, Italy. Lots of really tasty stuff is actually pretty disgusting when you think about it. Like steak. We all know that's a slab of a dead cow. Or eggs. You know the unfertilized, hard-shelled, reproductive body that's produced by a bird? Mmm, delicious. You know, some food is produced in ways that are enough to turn your stomach, but that doesn't mean it isn't flipping good to eat. Eating casimarsu, magnet cheese. 
This cheese might be pushing the boundaries just a teeny bit too far, though. Kazumarzu cheese is produced on the Italian island of Sardinia, and it's so completely grossed out most of the rest of the world that it's actually banned in a lot of places. Our old pals with the clipboards have even gotten involved to give this the title of the world's most dangerous cheese. Ooh, how edgy. So what exactly makes this cheese dangerous? Well, it's maggots, apparently. Yes, the process of making this cheese involves the rather intimate involvement of cheese skipper flies, which lay their eggs in cracks as the cheese matures, and then those resulting maggots, apparently, will then wriggle through the paste, digesting the proteins, and thus transforming the stuff into a creamy and soft cheese. Well, that all seems fine, doesn't it? Nothing to see here. Number 9. Muktuk, Greenland Next up, we have this specialty from Greenland. Known as muktuk, it's a traditional food that has been eaten by Inuit people for generations, and it's made out of whale skin and blubber that's been frozen. This may indeed be an acquired taste. Muktuk is usually served either raw or pickled, and its flavor develops as you eat it. That basically means that the especially chewy texture of this food means that each bite is going to stay with you for quite some time. There are many layers to muktuk, there's the skin, which according to some people is supposed to taste like hazelnuts. But it is whale skin after all, so I'm not really convinced. Then there's the fat, which is extremely chewy, and then there's that protective layer after that. This bit is even more chewy, and it really sounds like a whole lot of work to be honest. And frankly, it looks kind of tough. Number 8. Stargazy Pie, England now we have a super weird pie from England. This macabre delight hails from a tiny fishing village in Cornwall called Mausel, and it dates back to the 16th century, the story of a heroic sailor named Tom Balcock. The legend goes that the sailor rowed out in dangerous high seas to catch enough fish to feed the starving residents of the village. The pie is traditionally served on the 23rd of December, known as Tom Balcock's Eve, and the fishes have to be served with their heads still attached as they poke out of the pie crust and gaze towards the stars. How absolutely creepy. Number 7. Locusts, Israel The terrifying specter of a swarm of locusts is not only a biblical image, it is a real and dangerous threat to the lives of communities today. A swarm of locusts can include as many as several billion of these insects at any given time, and that's a potentially devastating phenomenon. A large swarm of these insects can rapidly spread across an area of thousands of square kilometers, and then they will literally devour everything that's in their path. Fortunately, these insects are usually solitary, so their mass gatherings and super destructive behavior is not really all that commonplace. But when it does happen, it can be catastrophic. Back in 2020, many countries in East Africa were under the threat of a swarm of locusts, and there were a couple of massive attacks that actually destroyed entire harvests in mere moments. They worked their way through crops, sometimes across a massive area, for as long as months at a time, and they eat everything. Uh, and that means that the swarm will take all the vegetation, which includes any grazing pasture, so that it's highly likely that livestock will also perish in the process. To make matters even worse, these insects also get down to breeding while they're up to all that destruction. And so, if these jerks are eating all the food, then I guess all that's left to eat is the locusts themselves. Well, kind of. And luckily, locusts are the only insect that's considered kosher, so that's a relief. If you deep fry the pests or cover them in chocolate, Apparently, they are kind of pretty tasty. Number 6. Fried Brain Sandwiches, United States of America Now, although this may sound a lot like Hannibal Lecter's favorite snack food, this is a weird meal that has been eaten in the United States since the 1800s. Funnily enough, however, there are actually only a rare few restaurants in the Midwest that still make this strange old sandwich. And it turns out that it's a throwback to a time when East St. Louis in Illinois was a massive center for meatpacking. This was during the late 19th century and early 20th centuries. Naturally, there was a lot of meat to be processed, and from each cow that went to slaughter, there was also a lot of brains left over. Some bright spark mustered up the notion that it may be a good idea to eat them, and the fried brain sandwich became a reality. 
The brains were breaded and then fried and stuffed inside of a bun or some rye bread, slathered in some pickles and mustard, and some onions. The use of cow's brains has gone quite out of fashion since the 1980s, when everyone was freaking out about mad cow disease. So as a stand-in for the original, the remaining chefs of this weird cuisine actually use pig brains instead. It's delicious, I'm sure. Number 5. Bugs Southeast Asia A while back before we were all dealing with such an existential crisis as the climate today, we were being told that one of the foods of the future would be insects. That's right, these are allegedly a great source of protein, and unlike the farmed favorites of our modern plates, they're wild and abundant. They may be farmed in huge quantities and use very little in the way of resources, so it all kind of sounds like a no-brainer, right? Well, you'll still be required to eat bugs, so there are at least a few drawbacks to this brilliant world-saving scheme. A bug burger doesn't seem as though it would be satisfying as the traditional beef patty, but then what the heck do I know? My mind has been utterly addled by the American farming industry's vice grip on the population's understanding of nutrition, and I'm completely indoctrinated by their propaganda. Anyhow, there are some people across the globe who do eat bugs on purpose, not just when they're riding their bicycles with enthusiasm, and they seem to rather enjoy them. Various bugs can make tasty street snacks, and some are extremely popular, even if they do seem just a little bit crunchy. Crickets are most commonly found insects to be eaten around the world, but other types of bugs are also consumed with great enthusiasm. Scorpions are regularly found as street snacks on some regions of China, with the Wang Fujing street snack in Beijing being particularly famous for its unusual offerings. This includes scorpions, snakes, and even starfish. Live scorpions are considered a traditional dish in China and are also used in cold weather to provide relief for certain ailments in Chinese medicines. It's believed that consuming them can raise the body temperature. But as we've already seen, insects are actually a totally valid source of protein, and it's even been suggested that in the future, all people will have to eat them when we have screwed up the planet with all the climate change. Number 4. The Century Egg A weird Chinese delicacy, the century egg is an acquired taste to say the least, usually made from duck eggs. These eggs are covered in a mixture of water, salt, coal, and calcium oxide, and then left for 100 days. Then, a process occurs over the time that they're buried. The eggshell will dissolve completely, and the egg white changes color, becoming a mass of gelatinous brown goo. The yolk changes into a nasty dark green moldy-looking blob thing, and it sounds truly delicious, I know. <laughs> Apparently, and this is another one of those things that we'll have to rely on other people's reviews, the century egg has a very distinct and intense kind of sharp flavor. I mean, really? I'm shocked that if you make a rotten egg, it would have a strong flavor. But anyways, this is actually an ancient technique that dates back from over five centuries ago. The method back then was even more iffy. They say that modern techniques are safer for the consumer, and a century egg is served most often by itself, or sometimes to give soup a powerful fragrance, or to go alongside some fermented vegetables and salads. So the real question is, after all of that, would you eat a century egg? Number 3. Hakarl, Iceland Mmm, rotten shark for tea. Said nobody ever. But this is a thing that people do actually eat, and some of them even do it on purpose. This Icelandic dish apparently dates all the way back to the Viking times, and we all know that they were only doing things that we should continue to enjoy in the modern world. You know, all that invading and ransacking and general ultra-violence, that was all perfectly sensible. So they probably had some excellent recipes as well. If you fancy a bit of fermented shark meat, then there are a few rules. This stuff is not only gross sounding, but it's also kind of dangerous. The act of fermenting the shark was actually part of the food preservation practices that were essential to ensure year-long supplies of sustenance during the more lean months. So it did make sense in the past, you know, before modern things like refrigeration and whatnot became widely available. These days, it's a delicacy that is rooted in keeping traditions alive, but the sharks that are used to make the stuff are actually not even edible when the meat is fresh. It is poisonous, so it does require processing before the meat can be ingested. 
We just cut it, similar yeah. like normal fish, and we cut it in five or 10 kilos pieces. The shark is usually liberated of its head and then gutted like any other fish, but then it's bunged in a hole in the ground and left there for six to 18 weeks. After that, it's dug up again, cut up, and hung out to dry. And the result of what's left over has decidedly mixed reviews. From disgusting, terrible tasting, to like blue cheese but a hundred times stronger, to physical revulsion and immediate expulsion of the offending item. So with that said, would you give it a try? Number 2. Salo, Ukraine this is a food from Eastern Europe that is made from slabs of cured subcutaneous pork fat that may have skin, or sometimes not, and sometimes is also accompanied with layers of meat. And sometimes it's just the fat part. Just the fat. How tasty. It actually exists in many countries all across Eastern Europe. In Hungary and Romania, it's sometimes seasoned with paprika, whereas the versions found in the South and the West Slavic countries are regularly smoked. To serve this food, it's usually prepared by being fried or chopped up finely, along with garlic, as an accompaniment to borscht. It can be eaten raw or cooked, and may also be added to sausage for extra flavor, and may be sliced extremely thin and put on rye bread alongside vodka. This is how it's generally served in Ukraine. It's not quite such a weird food as some of the others that we've seen, but this is also a traditional method for using some fat from pork in many different ways across a range of dishes. Have you ever eaten this dish or its equivalent, and how was it for you? Go ahead and share your pork fat stories in the comments section down below. Number 1. Sanokji, Korea Apparently, this is a thing that people in South Korea are really super into, and some of the more adventurous visitors to the country also seem to oddly eager to try it. If eating a live octopus is your thing that you're into, then who am I to judge? And you should probably acquaint yourself with some of the dangers of such a niche gastronomic experience. To begin with, when you're munching on the live octopus, although really, do you want to do that? It does seem rather rude to not even allow the animal the dignity of being dead first. You're going to need to chew properly, or else its suckers are going to get stuck in your throat on the way down. Stuff stuck in your throat, you may or may not be aware of, can cause you to choke. Apparently, there's a way to eat the octopus that makes it less dangerous, but possibly not much less gross. The chef prepares the poor creature by removing the mucus from its tentacles and then cutting them into small pieces so that they can cause less of a choking hazard. So that's all well and good, but even still, it's a live octopus. What the hell are you even doing? That's all from our tour of culinary weirdness. Did you work up an appetite on our travels? And which of these unusual foods have you tried? Go ahead and tell me all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.